I've recently set up a DFS name server and a pair of servers for replication on a Windows server. And what I'd like to do is to take a look at some of the more advanced features and options that we have within DFS management. I'm going to start by clicking on the namespace underneath where it says namespaces. And we can see we have one shared folder that's in our list. If we'd like, we can add an additional namespace server. So what I did was I have server one and server two, and the first server I added to be the namespace server, which is the server that manages the namespace that we're using, is going to be server 01, but now I'm gonna add in server 02. Check the name. And now we have two namespace servers. And that will give us additional redundancy just in case one namespace server goes down. And here's our second namespace server that's showing up. If I go on to the next tab, which is delegation, we can see who has permissions to make any changes. So we see under domain admins, they have explicit permissions granted. And we can add additional permissions if we'd like here. And if we wanted to search for any particular name, then we can go ahead and type in the folder name here and it will find the path to it for us. Now I only have the one folder, so it doesn't make a lot of sense with just a few folders, but if you have a lot of them in there, sometimes that can really help. Now I'm gonna right click on the folder itself and go to properties. And here we have a few other things that we can make changes to. We can see the namespace path and the folder name, but I click on referrals. This is the referral to which server you're going to get first. So there's multiple servers in a DFS namespace and replication environment, and you want to pick the server that responds the fastest to you. So we can see there's the cache duration for the referral, that we can change the amount of seconds if we'd like, and here we see the folder that inherits settings from the root. Here we can check the box for exclude targets outside of the client site if we want. We can also check the box for clients fail back to preferred targets, which right now is disabled, and we can enable that if we like. And then there's an advanced tab as well for use inherited permissions, as well as setting explicit view permissions on the DFS folder. So if we'd like, we can override the permissions that were already set. Then we have replication. Under replication, we see the name of our fully qualified domain space to the shared folder. And under membership, we can see we have both server 01 and server 02. Now I called the folder shared and I put it in both the same locations on both servers. You don't have to do that. It could be two completely different named folders if you'd like, and that data will replicate from one to the other. It just makes it easier to understand when you're looking at it if they're both named the same. Under connections, we can also see server 01 and server 02. The connection status for both is enabled. So if one of them is disabled, then the other server will pick up all client requests. Of course, replication will be turned off if one of the two clients is disabled. Under delegation, we can see once again the permissions. On the right-hand side, it can help us out with troubleshooting, such as verifying the topology, we can see the topology for replication group is fully connected. So that's good news. We can also go to creating a diagnostic report. And we can see that a wizard pops up. We have a health report, which just gives us a general health report on information about the servers. And we have a propagation test. So this is going to test propagation to the replicated folder. So it's going to be data that's going to be in one folder and it's going to be replicated to the other folder and it's going to test that to make sure it works right. And then we have the propagation report on that replication if it's happened. Let's go ahead and click next. I'll choose the propagation server as server 01, but you can choose either one and click create. And we see we were successful. Let's do the same but this time we'll choose the propagation report instead. And the report shows up as a report in a web browser, and we can go ahead and expand any of these different areas if we need to, and it gives us details of the test and how it went. 
DFS is also, interestingly enough, used by the Active Directory domain controllers to replicate Active Directory objects back and forth between the different domain controllers. So DFS is important even if you haven't installed the DFS namespace and the DFS replication server roles. Distributed file system offers redundancy as well as faster access to remote offices.